This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 43 years of practice and over a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Welcome. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, and you're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live. Indeed, I am sitting here on this great Labor Day weekend, so we can bring you the, the best information possible, as we always try to do every Sunday, every weekend. We're here at 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Give me a call. I'd love to talk to you. We're going to talk about a subject today that affects Unfortunately, millions and millions of people, and sometimes you don't know why it's happening. We'll get into that in just a second. Make sure you get out and have some fun. This has been a long Labor Day weekend. You all deserve to enjoy yourself, your families, your friends. You know, we're going to have family over, have a little bit of a cookout this afternoon, and uh, sit around and enjoy ourselves, relax. I get a day off tomorrow. It's not usually my day off. I have to work by, you know, pushing the pencil and doing things like that when I'm not in the office and review cases and make sure that our patients are being treated properly and, you know, the like and so forth. We're living in interesting times, my friends, and we have to make sure that we do everything that we possibly can to make sure that we have one foot in front of the other in our own way, in our own determination as time and life goes on. So just remember that, you know, you your life as well as your health is a do-it-yourself program. Be involved. Make sure that you're listening to multiple sides of the same viewpoint and bring that together and ask yourself the question, you know, is what I'm hearing makes sense? Is this, is, uh, is, is this valid or is, is it uh, kind of fallacious? But, you know, Think about it. Think it through. And that's all I'm going to say on the subject that's around us. So much is happening. The unfortunateness that's taking place overseas, the things that, you know, we have all been raised to believe in and growing up, things seem to be shifting. So be aware and contemplate and become involved, but in a positive way. We have a great program today. We're talking about your health. Remember I said health is a do-it-yourself program, which is the title of the book that I wrote about six years ago. And by the way, coming up with a, a rewrite, and it'll be ready for publication towards the end of the year, the first of the year. I've been working on it and trying to add as much as I can clinical pearl section. That will be great for everybody's application. And I want to uh, let you know that if you go to drtomrosell.com, that's D-R-T-O-M-R-O-S-E-L-L-E.com, that site's being redeveloped, and there's going to be a lot of data, a lot of information on it that allow you to be proactive in your own health. There's going to be some preferred providers that we're going to embrace there. There's going to be products that we will support, and we're not going to support them unless we do our diligence on them and make sure that they're going to be something that we would use in our own families and give them to you. So check it out. Be aware. You may have to go back a couple times. There's things there now. But as we go through uh, the next uh, several weeks, you're going to find that there'll be many things that will be of interest to you. So what are we talking about today? What are we going to you know, give you information on? We're going to be talking about something that I said affects millions of Americans, and sometimes they're aware of it, and sometimes they're not aware of it. And it has, you know, a symptom process of not being able to walk properly, if you will, uh, weakness, numbness, tingling, pain. And it could be down into your arms. It can be into your legs. It could be your back. You can't get out of the, the chair the way you're supposed to. We're talking about the symptoms and we're going to talk about the causes and we're going to talk about treatment of something called spinal stenosis. Did I get your attention yet? And there's a difference, by the way, between spinal stenosis and arthritis, and we're going to try to distinguish those for you as well today. In the second half of the program, we're going to give you some tips and some clues 
that it's not necessarily something that you have to live with. And what I'm trying to do is get you to avoid surgery if at all possible and to be able to take control of your life and to be able to resolve this. You know, there's conventional treatment, which is surgical and so forth. And there's conservative treatment that is not only preventive, but may able to resolve a lot of the problems uh, that we're dealing with. So when you're dealing with spinal stenosis, stenosis by itself means an abnormal narrowing, if you will, of the whole that neurological uh nerves come out of the spinal cord is is impaired and so forth so that narrowing happens in the the bone channel we'll put it that way we usually see it in older people because of accumulation of stresses what am i talking about that means injury patterns and dietary aberrations and things like that over time uh the weakening of the system is due to joint space and ligaments being thickened and degenerated and sometimes calcification being put in there, cartilage loss. Uh, but it's a narrowing, if you will, a narrowing of the space. You know, there's a lot of research out there that shows the prevalence of uh, low back, what we call lumbar stenosis, degenerative stenosis, uh, is increasing dramatically. And it may be up as much as 13% of the population of this country. Think about that. When we're talking about 13% of the population, we're talking in the neighborhood of about 45%, if my math is correctly, about 45 or 45 million people. That's huge. And those are the ones that they're identifying. You know, it's uh, some common disorders that seem to contribute to stenosis are everything from uh, abnormal dietary patterns where you're going to cause an acidity, an acid problem that causes inflammation to be worsened. So when you have injury, you add inflammation onto it. Now the joint spaces begin to break down. You know, stenosis can affect many parts of the spine. Most common is going to be the low back, which we call the lumbar spine, or the neck, which we call the cervical spine. Uh, you know, the nerve roots in the lower back become compressed. There's like somebody strangling them. Uh, there's a good friend of mine who's a neurosurgeon in the Washington area, and we were talking one time at his office, and he said, look, he said, Tom, he said, it's what's you know, in my world, what stenosis is, is like somebody putting their hands around your neck and squeezing. Now, that can lead to pain, obviously, but it also can just lead to numbness and, and muscle spasm that it feels like no muscle in your body is firing independently of the other. Everything is way too tight. You know, stenosis cuts off blood flow, you know, to lower parts of the body as well. Guys, here's, you know, here's something to think about. Have you ever uh, suffered from any kind of ED problem? And, you know, if you're in a, uh, you know, supine position, I mean, laying on your back, you still might be good. You know, you st- things, you know, the hydraulic system is still working the way it's supposed to. But as soon as you change posture patterns, if you stand up, guess what happens? There's nothing there. It goes away or it gets to the place where, you know, it's not strong enough. That's a typical presentation of spinal stenosis of the lower back. About 75% of the cases of spinal uh, stenosis occur in the low back. So we're talking about foot numbness and leg pain numbness and so forth. A lot of it's attributed to, you know, well, you have diabetes or you have, the diagnosis will be neuropathy, you know, that neuropathic degeneration. Well, neuropathy uh, is is only a presentation of something else that's going on, and you have to take the time to really distinguish the two. In the middle back where your rib cage is, it's pretty rare. But in the neck, which we call the cervical spine, uh, there's a lot of things that can happen from uh, spinal cord injury at the upper portion of the neck, uh, concussions. You know, if you hit the hit your head, you can you can feel your whole body shift. Happened to me about a year and a half ago, now coming up on two years, where, you know, I hit the floor and I smashed my head and I ended up with all kinds of severe, you know, weakness and, you know, things not working the way they're supposed to. Uh, in some cases, it's, you know, that ends up in uh, emergency spinal s- surgery. But if we want to distinguish, you know, the types of spinal stenosis, we talked about the low back or lumbar spinal stenosis. Uh, the, the nerve roots become compressed. Again, remember, it's a strangulation. They're becoming uh, squeezed upon, and they can lead to leg pain. It can lead to uh, buttocks pain. It can lead to low back pain, or it can just lead to weakness and the inability to move. 
And, you know, that low back stenosis cuts off the blood flow to the lower part of the body. Guys, that's what, which we uh, just talked about standing up and, you know, your, uh, your, your uh, erectile dysfunction becomes worse. Uh, that's a neurogenic, it's called neurogenic claudication when that blood supply is affected. You know, so we're talking about the majority of problems uh, in your low back. If it seems to be global, then you can have arthritis, degenerative changes of the joint spaces, ultimately leading to this compression, this narrowing, this strangulation, if you will, of the the nerve roots. Um, there are multiple causes. We get into the neck. We said, you know, it's more, much more prevalent in the low back than it is in the cervical spine. You know, in the neck, the spinal cord is compressed and it can become very severe. It can cause serious problems of, uh, that, that can't be messed with. Sometimes you've got to get to, you know, have surgery done, but there's so much that can be done to modify, mitigate, and actually reverse the type of thing. But, you know, stenosis can be, as we said, back pain. It can be neck pain. It could be just, you know, inability to move or your whole body feels like it's stiff and tight and not moving the way it's supposed to. You get that pins and needles tingling sensation, you know, numbness. There's throbbing sometimes in the body and particularly in the lower part of the body. Uh, it's possible for the symptoms to spread throughout the lower, uh, the lower part when a nerve root becomes affected further up, uh, because the spinal cord, think about it. <clears throat> the spinal cord is like a big coaxial cable that's coming off your brain. So the brain's the mainframe, it's the computer. Then you have the spinal cord that goes down to it. And subsequently, if it's affected up there and it's hitting the right pathways, you know, one of the, we call the descending pathways of the spinal cord, it's going to affect things low down. You can have, you can have bowel problems. You can have bladder control problems. You know, suddenly, you know, you, you start having to go to the bathroom all the time. You're getting up constantly. You get in a certain position and you say, why every time do I get to this position? Do I suddenly have an urge to go urinate? Well, it's because you're further compressing the nerves that go to the bladder. And there's a little muscle in the bladder called the trigon. And a trigon comes from three. It's a kind of a, a trapezoid shaped type of thing. And it controls your ability to hold urine back. If that's not working the way it's supposed to, you're going to have a problem. You know, there's pain on lifting heavy objects. You know, it's, it's usually immediate. You know, you're okay, fine, until you put something in your arms. And it doesn't have to be a lot. All of a sudden, oh, my God, you know, I used to be able to lift 100 pounds without any problem. Now I got 25 pounds or 20 pounds in my arms. And it's like I have no strength. I have a lot of weakness. But, you know, the if you're standing for long periods of time and you're coughing, you're sneezing, you're bending, you're stretching, uh, it can make things much worse. And particularly getting up in the morning after you've been in one position, it takes you a while to get mobile. Um, but again, remember, in severe cases of spinal stenosis, uh, you can end up with paralysis if you don't do something about it. And we're going to talk about what that something to do something about it is a little bit later on. You know, some people go really long, long time, years, if you will, without knowing what they're, what they're dealing with. And that's the problem. Then it gets worse. And we're going to talk more about that. We're coming up to a break. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. This is an important presentation for all of us. Don't go away. I'll be right back after some very important messages. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live. Indeed, we are on this beautiful Labor Day. Maybe a little cloudy where you are in some areas. It's nice and bright and, and a but it's a lovely day. It really is. It's gorgeous outside. We're having family over this afternoon and we're going to sit around and chat a bit and, you know, uh, cook some burgers and some chicken and, you know, some turkey sausage and lots of vegetables and, you know, I might even sneak and have a good glass of red wine this afternoon because, you know, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to sit here and enjoy the people that I love the most. So join us, you know, in your neighborhood and have a good time and enjoy each other because that's what life is all about. We're talking about something today that affects way too many people. You know, guesstimates on my half because it says about 13% of the population, those are the ones that they know about. So we're talking a minimum about 45 million people that are really aware that they have a problem called spinal stenosis. 
and we're talking about numbness and pain and, uh, you know, the neuropathies that occur and they can get worse over a period of years. Um, and some people go years and years without knowing they've, they're experiencing, you know, these early signs of spinal stenosis, which are just, you know, loss of strength and muscle weakness and throbbing and some low back pain and so forth. And, you know, it goes on, you know, all of these signs become worse over a period of time as the nerves and the spinal cord become much more compromised. Remember I said in the first part of the program that it's very much a good friend of mine, a, a neurosurgeon in Washington said that it's very much like putting your hands around somebody's neck and squeezing it. You're strangling the cord. You're strangling the nerve roots as they exit. So, you know, we're, we're going to get into the treatment, both conservative and uh, the conventional treatment uh, in the second part of the program. I want you to realize that this is a problem that is insidious and it's sneaky and it shows up and then we wonder why we can't function and we find ourselves as we get older not being able to get out of a chair we don't have any core muscles if you you will our you know our legs are weakened our butts are weakened we can't do anything uh this those are all indicators and things will make it worse but i want you to let you know that call me 888-630-9625 that's 888-630-9625 let's you've got a problem like this let's talk about it you got any kind of a problem let's talk about it i'm here to answer your questions in this world of healthcare that is shifting and changing so rapidly um you know back pain is often caused by strain and pulls and the movement of vertebrae out of position there's called spinal subluxation in my world and or spinal lesion and you know it's important to distinguish several different things you know if uh, a doctor makes a diagnosis of spinal stenosis he has to make sure that he understands or she understands that there could be other contributing pieces to it and not just start throwing drugs at a patient. You know, over-counter drugs, anti-inflammatories, what we call NSAIDs, and NSAID is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, drug. And it's like aspirin and Motrin and things of that nature. Tylenol is acetaminophen. Uh, and a lot, there's a lot of people that consider it better than NSAIDs for long-term use if you're having to take it on a daily basis. But the problem is none of these things have uh, a permanent resolution and they just allow the problem to continue to get worse without the symptom process or enough to be able to dumb down the symptoms over a period of time. Uh, muscle relaxers, you know, to allow the body just to let go. You know, one of the things that you can use as a diagnostic with some of this if you're in a lot of spasm and you're tight and you're stiff and you have no power in your legs and your buttocks and so forth, and you can take one, and I'm saying one, one Advil, and all of a sudden, you know, within, it takes effect within three, four hours, and all of a sudden, everything seems to loosen up. We're not talking about pain. We're talking about the body seems to loosen up and things come back. That's almost a very direct diagnostic uh, trial on spinal stenosis. So there's ways of handling this craziness that you need to know about. We're going to get into that in the second part of the program. But understand that conservative care done properly can resolve this thing and under the right conditions like anything else can begin to reverse a lot of it. You're going to have to decompress, meaning resolve the, the pressure that's on the spinal cord and the nerve roots as they exit. And just think about it this way. As the nerves exit the spine, as they go outside of the spine, there's two branches. One branch goes inside and attaches to the organ systems. Another branch goes outside and attaches to the muscle. So if you're having muscle problems and weakness, you're also going to have internal problems in the organ systems that that nerve root also goes to. Think about that for a minute. We're coming up to a break. And when we come back, we're going to start talking about the fixes and things that are going on that you can make a difference in your life. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM WMAL. 
Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Indeed, I am on this Labor Day, and hopefully you're out enjoying it and having some fun and planning for a little bit of, uh, you know, barbecue this afternoon with uh, your family and your friends and sitting around and just enjoying each other's company. Make sure that you do. You know, it's important that we all get together and, and talk and exchange and love each other at the best possible way that we can. So enjoy your day. Have a great time. I intend to. I'm going to be with my guys this afternoon. I'm here for you right now at 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. We're talking about a devastating condition called spinal stenosis. And we said that, you know, it's a condition that uh, advances over a period of time unless you do something to stop it. And the symptoms of, you know, just back pain and numbness and stiffness and inability. And over time, that pins and needles sensation, uh, the throbbing in the lower part of the body, the inability to get up, the loss of different uh, control mechanisms of bladder and bowel, uh, particularly when you change postures. You know, you can be sitting around. And by the way, guys and ladies as well, do you know that if in many cases of spinal stenosis, if you're sitting in the wrong position that you cannot feel your genitalia, all of a sudden they go numb and you, you know, start freaking out. You get up, start moving around and then the, the sensation comes back. But here's the other piece that you had to go urinate and you didn't know it until you got up and now you got a problem, right? So impaired bladder and bowel control and, you know, uh, pain. I said earlier that, you know, you used to be able to lift a hundred pounds and now you can only lift 20 or 25 and that hurts you. There's a lot of things that you kind of set aside and your doc tells you to take this or that or the other thing. And then I made a comment earlier on and uh, I want to make sure that I was clear about it. You know, I said that if you want to find out if a lot of the leg stiffness and soreness and so forth that you have is due to spinal stenosis and you don't really take any uh, any medications whatsoever. And I said, take one Advil or Motrin. Now, not Tylenol, but Advil or Motrin. And within two, three hours, see if the discomfort ameliorates significantly. Now, what I want you to understand, I'm not advocating you take this. It's just a very quick way. Now, what happens with that <clears throat> long-term use of any of these things will actually make spinal stenosis worse. Because if you've listened to the program, any NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, will compete for the receptors. Receptors meaning the actual hooking points for the things that repair joint spaces, which are glucosamine sulfates, or the sulfate ion is what we're talking about. Now, having said that, I want to just make sure that I was clear. I don't want you to go out and take that stuff because it's going to make life much worse as time goes on. So, you know, when we talk about treatment, you know, conventional treatment, meaning traditional medical treatment is is pain control. And, you know, you're, you're talking about... Uh, you know, putting the fire out so you don't, you're not annoyed by it, right? And in the short term, like I said, things might get better. But in the long term, those things that are making it better become, you know, much worse over time. So the over the over the counter anti inflammatories, which we just talked about, the NSAIDs, acetaminophen, which is your Tylenol, you know, it's, it's considered to be better long term. But the problem with acetaminophen used long term, it affects liver function and it's the number one cause of. Uh, liver failure for hospital admission. Now, muscle relaxants, things of that nature, and those are the, so anyway, those are the ways that they begin to control the short-term use of narcotic medications for severe uh, episodes and so forth. That's traditional surfing. Then ultimately, when it gets severe, where you can't function, you can't move, you have no strength, then they recommend surgery as a last resort. They go in and debride the other the area. Spinal stenosis surgery can be very uh, put you in a great deal of jeopardy. Uh, they're doing some things with hot laser where they go in and debride the area, but there are side effects to that. You're burning tissue up. They have to be careful that they're not they're not going to affect the nerve root or the cord. So let's talk about the natural approach. In my world and what we look at in a multidimensional point of view platform is simply, you know, what caused the problem to begin with? What's going on? What has caused the inflammatory reaction that has caused the injury now to become worse? You know, the spinal cord compression. 
So early on, we want to make sure that we have muscles that are, str- are strong, joint spaces that can move, uh, mild exercise, going out for a walk. But we have to look at patients' dietary patterns as well. We have to look at their body weight as well. You know, if they're eating way too much junk, if you will, it's going to be inflammatory minimally. So things that cause swelling have to be eliminated from the diet. Things that cause uh, an allergic reaction, even mildly. And I'm not just talking about things, oh, my God, I'm stuffed up or things of that nature. I'm talking about things that will cause tissue to be irritated and swell. So we look at, we'll look at those things. So we're going to add diet and we're going to add a little bit of exercise. In my world, if we take a look at somebody who has this, we're going to put those together, but we're going to look at how do we cause the uh, compression, if you will, to be decompressed. Well, we have decompression therapies that we can do. We use acupuncture. We do use low-energy light laser. And over a period of time, those things work if the patient is willing to change the underlying triggering mechanisms that took place to begin with. You know, regular full body workouts, gentle full body workouts, as I said, and strengthening the core muscles, the buttocks, the thighs, the upper back, the lower back, and so forth. Spending not a lot of time, but a little bit of time. <clears throat> We've been talking about uh, something that I embrace. There's an author by the name of Robin Sharma who wrote a book called the, the Five O'Clock Club. Now, the Five O'Clock Club can be the Six O'Clock Club, it can be the Seven O'Clock Club, but it's getting up early and doing things that are supportive for your whole body integrity. You know, the first part, as soon as you get out, get yourself out of bed, you do a little stretching, you do a little gentle movement and so forth. The second part is you do a little prayer, a little meditation. The third part is you do a little study moving yourself forward. You know, as a general rule, if you feel sharp shooting strong pain while you're exercising, knock it off, back off a little bit and make sure you get some help because you're probably doing it improperly, first of all. But you want to use muscles, particularly what we're talking about is spinal stenosis, a narrowing, a strangulation, a compression of the spinal cord and of the nerve roots. You want to make sure that you're working muscles that can be supported and slowly getting there and you want to deal with nutritional intervention. Get yourself to, you know, somebody who knows that work. In our office at, you know, the Result Center for Healing, we have three really excellent people that can help you. Make an appointment with them. If you want to know how to decompress that, you call the office and talk to one of our doctors. They'll talk to you on the phone to say, hey, listen, I want to talk to one of the docs and just to run this by them and see if I'm a candidate. If there's something that I can do about that. And they will. They'll get back to you. They make sure that happens because I'll make sure that it happens. And, you know, if you want to send me a note, it's real simple. You can do it one or two websites. You can go to drtomrosell.com, D-R-T-O-M-R-O-S-E-L-L-E dot com and I'll get back to you and I'll talk to you and and you know help you and I'll at least answer your emails or you can go to rosellcare.com and one of our doctors will deal with that as well. Remember we have you know uh, two outreaches we have uh, a practice out in the Broadlands Ashburn area and we have one in Fairfax. So you know let's make that uh, happen. You know exercise can be the most preventive thing. You know, back in the day, some of the old nutritionists, like a, a woman by the name of Dell Davis, a guy by the name of Carlton Fredericks. Now, I'm going back years ago. Some of you may recognize the name. Those of you who are much younger are not going to recognize those names. But I do that because even then, back then, they said, if you're going to cheat on something, diet occasionally, but never cheat on your exercise. Movement is life. And you want to make sure that you take that and embrace that. So we want to talk about exercise. We want to make sure that we increase mobility. We want to get ourselves to a good chiropractor or an acupuncturist, particularly in the world that I live in in applied kinesiology. You know, we help major uh, athletics uh, enhance their capacity over a period of many years. You know, years ago when uh, Gibbs was in town, I dealt with the Redskins for several years, uh, you know, 13, 14, 15 of the guys every week. Um, I was a doc for the Mystics, you know, for three and a half years. Uh, we've dealt with the Wizards and so forth. And so we have the ability to deal with injury and impact and concussive patterns, ultimately leading to, leading to damage in the body. Uh, but we want to maintain good flexibility and stretch and so forth. So as we go through, you know, what's a person to do when it comes to uh, the biochemical pathways? Well, first, we've got to take care of the structure, and then we have to make sure that we get uh, strong. 
and then we want to deal with the pain as best we can naturally. Uh, you know, if you have inflammation, inflammation because of injury, you want to, you want to decrease the, the inflammation within 72 hours by applying ice to the body about 15 minutes at a time. You know, so if you hurt yourself and you know you're going to make it worse, don't put heat on it. It'll make it worse. Uh, we want to make sure that, you know, you're, taking some type of relaxation and everything from, for example, uh, a natural anti-inflammatory uh, to a, what's called a proteolytic enzyme. We use a lot of those. We want to loosen and relax muscles so it, the, the compression is not there. We want to make sure we're drinking copious amounts of water. So take your body weight, people, and divide it in half. Whatever that number is, is the number of ounces of water that you should be drinking every day. If you're not getting close to that or even a fraction of that, you got a problem. You're increasing your inflammatory reaction. You have to make sure that you're eating enough protein so your body can heal. The amino acids in protein are what makes it have Eat a low uh, inflammatory diet, and we want to get rid of processed meats. We want to get rid of things that are not organic. We want to get rid of, because those are all GMO products. They have glycophosphates in them, which is Roundup. Uh, we want to make sure that we get tons of uh, green vegetables of all kinds that are not fried. By the way, we want to eat healthy fats. You need a lot of them. You need, you know, extra virgin olive oil. You need coconut oil, uh, things that free range organic grass fed eggs and grass, uh, grass fed uh, meats and wild caught fish. All those things are important in decreasing the inflammatory reactions in the body. You know, we want to uh, make sure that we're getting things like turmeric in our body, you know, omega fatty acids and glucosamines and MSM and, and as I said, proteolytic enzymes, but enough amino acid support of the right type and right balance that we can begin to repair and, you know, begin to make new. So, you know, many of you right now say, well, how do I know it's spinal stenosis? And there's a difference. Remember I said in the beginning of the program, there's a difference between stenosis and arthritis. Arthritis, back pain, and stenosis, back pain. What is the difference? What's what's the difference? Well, according to the Arthritis Foundation, spinal stenosis pain tends to worsen when the back is straight. So when you see people kind of bent over, they're trying to get away from compressing the cord. They're opening up the canal that the nerve comes because the gliding points of the spine, the facets have been damaged and they're pressing on the cord. So the body naturally is trying to get that done. And so when you watch somebody walking, they're bent over and that's a symptom to relieve spinal stenosis. If they're having to push to get out of a, a chair using their, their hands on their knees or on the arm, that's called minor, like a, a minor that works in, you know, uh, a cave, you know, getting coal and things, um, that's called minor sign. They're pushing themselves up. Uh, the arthritic pain tends to be persistent, and it's not dependent on movement. It's there kind of regardless. You move your fingers, your hands, you move. Um, rheumatoid arthritis, by the way, which is an autoimmune disorder, you know, causes uh, symptoms like, you know, tremendous fatigue and swelling or redness, you know, within the joint space of the skin. Take a look at your hands. If the upper portions of your hands are thick and narrowed, you got bumps on them, that's an indicator of a rheumatoid condition. And by the way, those little bumps I'm talking about the, at the end of your fingers are called uh, Heberden nodes. And it's pathognomonic of uh, that type of condition, of rheumatoid. There's so many things we can talk about, but what I want you to know is this is very manageable if it's done early and later on it can be manageable but it takes a lot of intense work we're coming up to a break you're listening to dr tom Rizal live i'm going to give you a whole lot more that you can do when we come back after these messages don't go away washington's mall 105.9 fm wmal welcome back everybody this is dr tom Rizal. you've been listening to dr tom Rizal live as you do every sunday at 11 a.m on the eastern seaboard those of you around the country you know the drill you know what time we start Thank you. And pass it on. And by the way, look for our podcast. We're almost ready to launch. We cut our first version. It should be up and running pretty quickly. You'll find it at drtomrosell.com. But we'll give you more information as time gets a little closer and make sure that that happens. Let's go to the phones. We have somebody that's been waiting carefully. I said that I wouldn't get into the topic. But, you know, since it's a question and I didn't put it out there, maybe I will. Marcus, thank you for holding. How can I help you, sir? Hey, Tom. Uh, happy Sunday to you. Um, yeah, uh, kind of a twofold question. I know you're uh, 
uh, you're, you have some concerns about this, as we all do. But those of us that are challenged with uh, having to take one of the COVID shots, uh, is there, one, a, a lesser of three evils in the three shots? And, two, once you do have the shot, um, is, it, uh, is there something you can do to uh, negate or to help the negative effects that we're seeing with some of those, uh, some of those treatments? Okay, wow. All right. So, you know, we were talking off air and I said I got to be careful because I've been putting a target on my back and I've had a couple of people kind of tap me on the shoulder to say that, you know, uh, maybe it shouldn't be quite as controversial. So um, we're trying not to be. But here's here's what it looks like at this point. So let me ask you, uh, uh, let me answer the questions accordingly. Um there's really no distinguishing differences of any of the vaccines that we know about, or that we call them the jabs. They're all mRNA. Now, the differences rely in or the fact that uh, the J&J is supposed to be directly related from any kind of the viral entity itself, uh, the coronaviruses. But you remember all coronaviruses have to do with uh commonalities. And so without distinguishing them, we're going to talk about a flu as a coronavirus, a cold as a coronavirus, uh, those types of things. So you really can't distinguish how they react, but they're, they're similar in their technology. Uh, they all cause inflammatory reactions. They all cause potential clotting problems. Uh, there's things of that nature. Now, having said that, we're all going to be uh, faced with decisions coming through and you and I'm very supportive of people making their own choices as long as they're getting as much data as they possibly can and making those choices based on knowledge and uh, going to uh, multiple sites going to the CDC and you know looking at that the World Health Organization but go beyond this the behind the scenes um, there's a uh, a YouTube channel called Rumble R-U-M-B-L-E that is a a conservative site. They have a lot of data on it as well. Uh, there's other pieces that you can look at. So we don't have enough time to get in there, but I, what I'll do is, is simply say this. What can you do preventively, or if you're going to have to, you're going to make that choice. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of side effects. We know that there's miscarriages. We know that there's you know other things that are taking place. So to prevent some, some of the clotting issues, you have to make sure that you take something that will thin the blood, providing that you're not already on a blood thinner. Please remember that prior to, so starting the day before uh, and for another month, and you can do it with omega fatty acids. You can do it with a, an NSAID uh, at low dosages so you don't suffer those consequences. Do they work 100%? These are basically applications that are coming out of the conservative regenerative medicine community. Uh, so things of that nature, uh, immediately detoxifying the system using ionization foot baths with low energy light laser using NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Uh, our office has those things. So if you have a problem, give us a call. If we can help you, we'll be more than happy to do that. I was just touching on it. We should have spent the whole program on it. We're coming on the end of the program. Remember, I'm here every Sunday for one reason only. It's because I love you. See you next week. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. 
My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com.